Okay, hi. Um, I'm back. <laughs> I don't know what else to say because this is like my first video that is not a vlog. So I hope you understand that it might be very awkward. I'm not usually awkward talking to cameras, but this time I might be because I'm answering questions. And my cat is now intensely screaming at me. <laughs> she wants to be petted. I really really like the questions that you guys gave out it's very important questions and i feel like i can't get through all the questions but i hope to so i might come out a little bit you know everywhere but that's that's just my personality so i'm not a very good organizer as you can tell i do so many videos of me organizing my things right you guys see the mess that i make that's me so I'm a very unorganized person. So I hope you understand that I might be very unorganized right now. Okay, I just realized that while editing the video, I was disorganized, like I was talking about, and I didn't create a very good transition, so I'm sorry. I can't. Well, here comes my attempt to answer a lot of questions that I feel like I should not be answering but I really really hope that you guys like it and that you can find this useful because it's just purely my opinion and purely my um, experience and I'm just talking about most of what I experienced in art school and if you guys don't think my answer that you answer is that useful it's totally fine i'm just saying what i what i felt in art school and i think that might be helpful for you guys so yes and let's go straight to the questions this was a question that i had when i first applied to art school so I had like a two year gap year, like a two gap years. So I had a lot of time to think about what I wanted to do. And I got into school later than other students. I was in the same class with like 17 year olds, 18 year olds, 19. It was like, well, I'm not saying that it was weird, but sometimes it did feel weird that some of these kids were like fresh out of high school and they couldn't relate to what I was talking about. But I think those two gap years really widen my horizon in a way. And I think for myself, I realized that I wanted to go to art school. I know actually I never realized that I wanted to go to art school. I just didn't know where what else to do. Well, I always wanted to go to art school actually. But I had a big fear. I think that's a better way to say it. I had a big fear about art school because I was never professionally taught. I know a lot of you guys fear the same thing. It's because I was homeschooled. And I didn't like do any extracurricular related to art. Or I didn't do anything much but sketching. And... And sketching was all I did, actually. And then, while I was making the portfolio for Emily Carr, okay, when I was making the portfolio for my school, I realized that I didn't really had a variety of skills when it came to creating art. And I wasn't sure if I was eligible to even go to art school because I didn't know what to do. And for my brain, for my thoughts, for my, um, I guess, I didn't have a lot of self-esteem for my artworks because I didn't feel great at it. I think this came because I was more design focused. I have a crafting and sewing background. And especially because 
my previous vlog was、um, making a dress. If you guys haven't seen it, please do. <laughs> But I have a sewing background and crafting background, so I never thought of myself as an artist. And I thought applying to art school wouldn't be good for me because. Everyone else would already know. I don't know with their proportion, with their, with their whatever. They're like I thought they would all be better than me, and I wasn't confident of even getting into art school. Actually, into the school that I applied to, because it is one of the best schools in this country, and not a lot of students actually get into the school because. They have a pretty small acceptance rate. And that's what I heard. But I got in, and I was like, "Okay, I guess I'll go." <laughs> I was really happy. I'm not saying that I wasn't happy. I was really happy, but I was still, you know, kind of doubting myself if this was the right decision because I am good at art. I think I am good at art, but am I that good enough to go to art school? Am I that talented enough to? Pursue what I am pursuing, and one thing that kind of made me adventure into art, into this art school is because for the first year you kind of explore what you want to do, and my school it's just the first year it's called the foundation year, so I just do a little bit of everything. They actually we don't do a lot of things <laughs> to be honest, but it's like a it's like the first year is、um, basically figuring your things out and for, starting from the second year you choose a major and you study your major and that's what I did and while attending the very first year I realized that I was I loved art and I loved visual and visual arts or just fine arts in general I thought I was not a fine arts person. I thought I was a design-focused person, so I thought I would go to industrial design, or communication design, or even animation. I didn't think I would go into this visual art,、um, fine arts degree, or even illustration. I didn't know that I would actually apply for visual arts because it just didn't seem like me. But after I Came into art school and really explored with my styles and with my,、um, I guess my creativity. I I kind of let loose of what I, you know, let loose what I thought I would needed to do because I thought I needed to do to do better sketching to go to go on to painting. I thought I needed to do that, but I realized not everyone is. Great at sketching, and I realized this. I was talking about this with another friend today, and I told him, "I am not that great at sketching, and I am not that great at drawing because, and that's one of the reasons why I thought I was not eligible to go to art school." But please, if you guys think like this, try a different medium. I really encourage you to try a different medium because, like, the way these tools and these mediums are used. It's different. They're very diverse, so I encourage you to explore and figure out what you want to do with your art style, with your colors, with all of that. With different mediums, there's like acrylic, there's like gouache, there's oil, there's、um, print making, there's drawing, there's croquis, there's so many different fields of art, and I genuinely want to encourage you to, you know, adventure. Because I didn't do that, and I only started this adventure last year. And girl, I missed out, and I wish I started way sooner. And I was afraid to branch out of the sketching phase because I thought I was not talented enough to do that. So please, if you are hoping to go to art school, if you're contemplating to go like to go to art school, I really recommend you guys to sort of explore. Your mediums, and who knows, you might find a passion in a certain medium, not so much in others. I think that's a tip for me. I think that's how I knew that I that I wanted to continue in art school, and I wanted to 
that I really wanted to do fine arts because of the mediums that that I came to love and yeah that's that's how I thought I was bound to be an art student I don't think I knew that I that I wanted to be an art student beginning of the first year the first semester I was very doubtful of myself because I thought I was an imposter and I'm sure a lot of you will feel the same if you guys are art students (laughs) That is a question to be um, answered because I really don't know how to do self-care, to be honest. Um, I'm a person, I think I talked about this in one of my vlogs, how I'm a person that goes go big or go home. So and I don't think that's a very good uh, mental state to have in art school because it's really difficult to go big every single project and yeah that's all i have to say and for the self-care part the self-care part i think one of the things i do is that i have trouble with overstimulation i art making art is very personal and very because it's really talking to yourself the whole time when you're making art you think is this the right direction or is this the correct way to do this and there's like so many different questions about all of these things and you have to figure out yourself and that's very emotionally physically um mentally taxing but i love it regardless and I think one of the self-care like i was talking about i have trouble with overstimulation my mind is always working i daydream a lot because even if i want to do nothing my mind just she she has a mind of her own you know what i mean <laughs> so if you leave me alone for like five minutes i would be staring into the blank and i would daydream for like five minutes and feel like i am out of this world and i do not belong in this world i have a serious problem with daydreaming daydreaming actually i try not to look at the screen screen i try not to listen to music i try not to do anything related to related that that is overstimulating because when i wind down i sometimes sometimes i normally watch netflix shows a youtube video Um, I go on social media, but all of those activities are very stimulating and they're very tiring to my brain. And at one point, I would stop everything and I would just do nothing. Or read a book or do journaling. But sometimes even reading a book is stimulating. So I like to do journaling or do nothing at all. So that is... That's not a very good, good tip, but... I just want to put that out there. Any tips on applying to art school internationally? Well, it matters on where you want to live, how you want to live, what budget are you on. So these are like the biggest questions, I guess. If you have the financial freedom to actually live outside of your country, your hometown, or your just whatever, like your environment that you currently live in and living internationally is very expensive so you got to really think about the financial aspect and how realistic this um, international thing will be for you because let's say you're going to international school international art school somewhere abroad like somewhere like paris or like london anywhere you can think of you got to think about just the living expenses of how you're going to live and if you're going to work there how many hours you can actually work in that in those um in that country does your visa allow working or does your visa allow this or that so you need to really consider what you can do because depending on how many 
school, like how many school years you're studying, your visa and your、um, eligibility to work, and the work hours might be different. And I really, really, really encourage you to check on that because that will be a very big. Um, um, Pyeonsu? What is Pyeonsu in English? Pyeonsu. I'll write that, write this in English somewhere. I'm gonna find it. That's gonna be a pig Pyeonsu. It's it's a Korean word. I can't think of it. Bilingual brain, mashed potatoes right now. Anyway, I just really want to think about the aspect that if you can really really go out of your comfort zone and if you can make new friends, if you can. Um, have like a good group of people that can support you mentally, physically, emotionally, because that is also very important. I think. Just think about that. Think about the realistic aspect. With all of the fantasy and all of those things washed away, think about how much you want it and how much it will cost you. I'm. I wish I could say this in a better way, but that's like the only realistic tip I guess I can give. I hope that was helpful. <laughs> I like this question because, what did your parents say when you told them you wanted to go to art school? Given that you're Asian,、um, most Asian parents don't approve art as a degree. Well, the funny thing is, my mom actually recommended me to go to art school. Surprise, <laughs> and I'm really happy that she did.、Um, she recommended me art school because I she thought that I should go to art school. That it was that obvious for her. I think、um, thought it would be good for me to go to to go study arts because I do have like a similar. Personality and similar ideas and similar creative process as her, so I think she kind of read through my brain and convinced me. It wasn't like a big convincing, but it was、um, like a very gentle recommendation. And I was like, okay, why not? Because it doesn't hurt to apply to a school. And I, I think I, I always thought I was artistic and. Yeah, my parents were very supportive, and that's not. And I'm very fortunate that my parents were very supportive. Yeah, and I'm very lucky that my parents were very supportive、um, through this journey because they acknowledge my difference, my <laughs> I guess my set of skills. <laughs>、um, yeah, it's it's kind of not normal for Asian parents to recommend. Their children to go to art school, but I'm happy that they were very supportive, and they're still very supportive. They love they love to watch my videos. It's so sweet when they come and tell like, "Oh, I love this week's video and this and that," and I and I think that's like one of the sweetest things ever. <laughs> and yeah, it makes me happy whenever they support my artistic journey. And I'm privileged to have that kind of support. I'm very thankful. I think this is one of the biggest questions that I still have. I do want to be self-employed, and I think my dream art job would be, you know, making art and just doing a lot of collaborations with different artists. And I have interests in a lot of different fields. I am very interested in the textile field because I love to work with soft materials and just in general textile. So I'm interested. I'm interested in doing painting. I'm interested to, to do some fashion-related things. I'm very everywhere, so I'm open to anything. And Yeah, I guess I don't really have a dream job yet, but I'm kind of working on it. But at the moment, I think a freelance of a little bit of everything is like my dream job, because <laughs> I know I get sick of things really easily. So that's why I kind of want. That's why I kind of want like a 
option to work on this, 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 this. So like in multiple different projects. So yeah, I don't want to do just like a single thing. I don't want to be just a painter. I do want to work in various fields. I do want to do a lot of things. So at, at the moment, it's a very open, you know, open book. So that's that. I That didn't solve anything, but I did answer that I want to be self-employed in the future. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, what kind of art do you like making? Um, I think I've been really enjoying printmaking and painting the most because these two works are very different and similar in a sense because printmaking, it's very design oriented, so I like that aspect and it's it's very restrictive and i like it because of that it's not as freeing as painting because painting um allows a lot of colors a lot of different movements but for printmaking you can add a lot of movements but there's still restraint and i think those two different mediums have different charms so i like printmaking and painting so far i do want to try ceramics in the future and if i get a chance i think i do want to do ceramics or something that's 3d base a little bit more practical yeah how do you deal with comparison when it comes to other arts works at school this is a good question it's really difficult not to compare your own artwork with other students because it's mandatory to have critique in class and especially in a studio class it's almost mandatory i have never seen a, a studio class that didn't have a critique because that doesn't make any sense sometimes comparison is good because you get the same assignment as all the other students and there's a variety of different styles there these people they're so different and that's that's a good comparison a good comparison comes from um when you're comparing their art style and their creative process the way they solve their problem and the way they um approached the problem it's just really sometimes mind-blowing because they think so differently and you learn a lot when you compare your artwork to another because you're just comparing not the technique aspect but the the way the thought process this this person went through and i think this is a good comparison but but when it comes to a bad comparison, I think the bad comparison comes when you are comparing your artwork with a peer's artwork face to face, just like according to its formal qualities. That's when the bad comparison comes. But it's really difficult not to do that. And for myself, I try to just look at the good things. That's what I do. And that's all I can do, actually. And just really think about what I can learn from the others and how I can absorb the energy from this classroom and just take it back home with me and sink it in and learn how to do better. Because that's what school is for. Learning how to do better. And... That's all I have for this one because there's full of st uh, students with imposter syndrome. So you're not alone. You're going to get through this. Do what you do. Do what you think you're best at. And I, I think that's all I could say. Because everyone is so different and everyone has a different way they work. 
a different way they use their medium. It's so different. So you don't have to compare yourself to others. You just have to compare how they approached the prompt, how they approached the assignment, how they did differently. Don't don't compare yourself how they did better, how they they um they had a better shading, they had a better color or like I don't know what to say like they had a better formal quality just don't compare those things because everyone's artwork is different diverse and they're still valid so I hope I hope everyone understands that because it's really difficult to kind of say that to yourself and I really understand if you're going through that stage <sighs> I don't think it's too important to have an art style because I don't know what my art style is. And for me, it's very, very um, stressful because I've been talking about this topic with another friend, a good friend of mine from school. And she and I was talking how it's so stressful when I look at my own art Instagram feed. My style is so different and everyone else all our peers seem to have everything figured out and they have their own art style. And I'm, I'm just like, I don't know what my art style is. But I don't think it's like, it's necessary. I don't think so. I think anyone can venture out and try different art styles. But in the end, I think I will find an art style that I like and that I will stick to. But at the moment, I, I don't think it's that important. I don't think it's important at all. You don't you don't really need an art style. <laughs> it's nice if you do, but I don't think it's that important. If you know what I mean, I'm like kind of rambly on this one because I don't have an art style. I don't know. Do you do you guys think I have an art style? Because if you guys do think I have an art style, please comment down what my art style is. I have a difficult time navigating it and I'm still trying to find my art style, so just wanted to like say that yeah so I think this part is just me talking a bit more honestly about art school because art school is expensive I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about the the thing that most people don't talk about in their YouTube channel because I think there needs to be more clarity on the finance part for art school I find it difficult when art vloggers spend a lot of money on their school assignment like me <laughs> and I do think I do owe something something of a clarity to my subscribers because it's not that clear in my videos and I do want to say that because art school, it's really, really expensive. You pay tuition to go to art school. And you also have to pay for your assignments yourself. The school does not provide you anything. I mean, sometimes they provide you things. But most of the times, they don't. And it's all on you, baby. And... And it's kind of frustrating um, that nobody really talks about this side of art school. And I do want to say that to you guys of maybe how much I spend. I won't like say how much I spend in a single assignment, but I can tell you how much I spend in a month. Monthly basis, like around estimated. And I think I spend around... 150 to 200 dollars at least a month on art supplies and i think this is because i just started painting as well because this is like i'm investing in new materials um new items just generally new things and i think there's a lot of big investments that I need to do and sometimes it's necessary but at times when I spend money for an assignment 
I would be like, is this really necessary? It's just for a school grade. When it, you know, when you think about it, it's just like it's not a life or death situation. Do I want to spend 30 bucks on a canvas when I could use that 30 bucks to buy myself a really good meal and a coffee? I just wanted to clear that out because nobody really talks about it <laughs> and I really wanted to talk about it and I really wanted to give a little bit more clarity on how I spend my money on my assignments and sometimes it's not just for assignments it's just for myself as well um, because I do art outside of schoolwork so <laughs> I do think these purchases will do me good in the later because I will make art from the supplies I buy. And another thing I want to talk about is uh, the idea of grading in art school. And it's kind of weird. So I'm saying that if you're already someone that's really talented in art and you go into art school, and you're contemplating to drop out because you hate it and you're mentally struggling. If you are contemplating to drop out because art school is too difficult for you, because art is art doesn't seem fun for you because you're majoring in and you're pursuing something you thought would be fun, but because it became your job you're not enjoying it so much, I say drop out. Um, you can do art even if you're not in art school. There are so many successful artists, um, designers, and and creative people that didn't go to art school and they're thriving because maybe because they didn't go to art school because they don't have a set structure and they're, they can manage their own um, prompts where they can do their own creative things and that is admirable and I, I think that's amazing hi <laughs> I just think that um, your mental health and your creativity does not be um, at cost because you want to attend art school I mean if you really really love going to art school then I say stay but if you're contemplating that you're not happy then I don't think art school is for you because art school isn't for everyone I just want to say that and I want to emphasize that and I do not want to romanticize my experience with art school I do not want to do that I feel like I am already doing it and I feel guilty of doing it and Yeah, I guess that's 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 what I want to say. It's I'm just I just want to go to the nitty gritty of the art of the art school reality because it's expensive. It might be mentally taxing. Some people love it. I love it, but some people don't. So I just want you to know that when you go into art school, you might not like what you're seeing. You might not like how you're treated. How the school is treating everyone or how what the material the school is teaching you it's different for every school it's different for each professor it's different from each peer classmates it's all different so i just want to say your experience is very your experience with art school might be very different from mine so whatever you feel listen to what your heart says and listen to what your body says let's say because sometimes you might be loving it but your body is saying wow i'm tired i need to rest and then <laughs> take a gap year do everything you want you're still young even if you're not young there are so many different ways to do art and i want to encourage everyone to to have fun with art and that's the best part about art have fun create different stories connect
connect with different artists. That's the best part about art. We create, we connect, we, you know, we just have fun. That's that's awesome. That's just. You don't need to do what others think you need to do, or what you think that everyone says. Well, I don't know what I'm talking about, but still, I hope you get what you like, what I'm talking about because at this point, I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, <laughs> I shouldn't be allowed to, to be talking about this subject, but that's what I want to say. I just wanted to be honest in this video. And I just want to think about my thoughts in art school and my experience in art school is very subjective and I just want to say that. Yeah, I just want to say that and end this video because I already think this video is going to be very long and that is my truth of art school. And this is my um, experience from art school. So I just want to say that whoever you are, wherever you are, I hope you're happy. I hope you're happy making art. <laughs> um, I don't know what else to say. Just be happy. That's all I want to say. And that's all for this video. I don't think I have anything else to say. I can always make more videos, you guys can always ask more questions, um, thank you for watching, I guess. This was mostly focused on art school, and I hope that was helpful, and goodbye, see you guys soon. Editing Veronica again. Um, some of the questions I couldn't go through, some of them were cut, and I think I want to talk a little bit more about myself and my major and what I do in a later video, and I'm going to do it as a paint with me, draw with me kind of video, so that's going to be done, maybe in the f near future. I'm ho hoping it will be done in December, so that is that. And I hope you guys have a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and I'll see you guys soon.